Today's video is brought to you by the Motherboards.org Gaming Deal of the Week. What's up today on the charts? It's Metro 2033 for under $5. If you're a fan, check it out in the link below. Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Elric Ferris here once again on the Motherboards.org YouTube channel with my co-host, JJ from ASUS. Now today, we're gonna to be showing you guys a couple of different really cool things. There's a lot of confusion out there about what exactly GPU Boost is and what it does. So today, we're gonna to be showing you a couple of different things. We're gonna be showing you the reference-based GTX 680 versus the Direct CU2 top card from the people over at ASUS. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you these two cards in comparison and show you how the different values of the Direct CU2 top card make it a much better card for overclocking and how it increases GPU boost by quite a bit. Then we're going to jump into after that and show you guys just some basic overclocking techniques for using the GPU tweak software from the people over at ASUS. Let's jump right in. So hey, obviously folks, right now we have the DirectCU 2 top card right here on the board, but previously to this, we had the GTX 680 reference design by them as well. Now what we did is we used two different tests on this. We used the Heaven DirectX benchmark, and we also used Alien vs. Predator. And what we did is we stressed the card out for five minutes, and then we jump out into the software variations, and then JJ here is going to explain all those good nuances to you folks. All right, Doc, uh, so we've been running uh, Unigen for about five minutes or so now. So that's enough to allow the card to go ahead and ramp up, go ahead and reach its more or less maximum temperature that we would normally have over gameplay. Uh, and from there, also allow the GPU boost clock to essentially reach its maximum that we would normally have in, in gameplay. So let's, from here, go ahead and get out and take a look at our GPU tweak utility. Now, this particular card is also just based on the reference design from NVIDIA, correct? That's correct. So everything that we're going to be seeing is in, is in reference to reference results. Okay, so we can see first off the bat that we have the GPU boost clock set at 1058. That's the referent boost clock uh, that the card would normally have with the base clock being 1006. Okay, so now if we take a look here at the very top, we can see that the maximum temperature that was reached was approximately about 79. Uh, see. And that's about normal, what we'd normally see in, in normal ambient uh, configurations. It's usually between about 79 to about 81, okay, in terms of the actual temperature performance. From here, we're going to go ahead and go down, though, and take a look at some other values. Uh, as you heard, this, the card, while I won't say it was loud, it was definitely audible. So we can see that the actual fan duty cycle is about 57, and then from there, the actual fan speed was about 23, uh, 2300 in terms of the actual RPM, right? Now, here's an interesting result is that we can see that the, the actual GPU clock or the boost frequency is actually over 1058. It's actually 1084. And the reason why is because it's looking at the actual temperature data as well as a power target data that we're going to look at in a moment to say, hey, can I continue to extend a little bit of the clock performance further, essentially dynamically overclocking the card. So it extended it to that point. At that point, that's when the card decided it was getting too hot or too much energy was being used and it throttled back from there? Um, well, actually, it wouldn't go past that 1084 marker. So it was consistently, if we take a look here at the graph, we're, we're seeing that more or less it was pretty much running at about that, that, part, that point. So about a uh, little bit underneath 1.1 gigahertz, which is what we would generally expect from a reference part. Of course, the hotter that it gets, and of course, the higher that the TDP goes, then the lower the GPU boost frequency would be. So, but if your user wanted to, though, they could actually turn the fan speed on to full blast, make it as loud as possible, though, and then just keep adjusting those frequencies, though, for their best overclock as well, correct? Correct, exactly. But then you're going to be sacrificing potential power consumption as well as the noise from the card. Uh, but you could go ahead and extend the margin. So as we see here, if we go down to the power target status, we can see that essentially it's reached 105%. So it's pretty much bucking up at its maximum quote unquote power curve. So at this point, generally in most situations, regardless of the game load, we're not generally gonna have a higher GPU boost frequency. Under maybe a very basic game, like if we're talking like you know Team Fortress 2, uh, possibly like Portal 2, things like that, maybe like Trine. Um, Diablo 3. Actually, Diablo 3, we found that the temperature data results were, were actually pretty close to even Battlefield 3. Um, so I, I don't even think that Diablo 3, you would actually get better boost results. Um, more so things that really don't have a heavy amount of shading um, and probably don't have more specialized things like tessellation or ambient inclusion or support for more advanced anti-aliasing. But overall, uh, essentially, we can see that these factors are what make up our GPU boost frequency. Now, at this point, if let's say you want to see how this is further affected by clock adjustment before we look at our non-reference solution and how our DigiPlus 
uh, VRM as well as our SCP power components and our cooling designs change the GPU boost scaling, we could go ahead and let's say modify this by you know a bump or two, right? So we could go ahead and do 1078. And at that point, we could go ahead and uh, we won't rerun Unigen, we'll just let's say run Alien versus Predator um, to go ahead and allow the dynamic load to kick back in and then we can look and see what the GPU boost frequency would be afterwards. Because once again, the big thing that you want to understand is that there's that base clock which we cannot modify. Okay. And then there's the boost clock which we can modify. But to a further extent, that boost clock, there's a little bit of a lack of control in terms that is not on the part of yourself. With previous generation cards, you could always manually set that value, and if you could run it, you could run it. But under this architecture, there's specific vBIOS information that's on the card that will control parameters of operation, including the clock speed. Which makes actually overclocking much more tricky than in previous generation cards, correct? I think once you kind of understand it, it's actually pretty straightforward. But yes, there's a couple of more variables to account for. And there's also, it's important to realize that even if you make certain adjustments, those adjustments might not necessarily guarantee the value that you're looking at. Okay. So it's going to finish up wrapping this up and from there we'll go ahead and once again take a look and see where the new GPU boost value is and where it's been modified. But keep in mind since we're already kind of hitting the upper end in terms of temperature and the upper end in terms of the power target value, at that point, like you noted, in terms if you want to extend the performance, you would probably have to start increasing the fan speed to even at a higher value as well as consider taking the power target value up to maybe like 110 or 120 percent. What about increasing the voltage of the card as well? The voltage, you want to do that as an absolute last option and we'll, we'll definitely talk more about that when we go into our card and specifically overclocking the card, but making modifications the voltage actually can end up adversely bringing down your overclock because you're bringing up power target and you're increasing the temperature. So even if we would have done the same exact value, so let's say 1078 and up the voltage as well, we actually might not even have any GPU boost frequency occur because we're also now having to deal with the fact of higher temperature. Overheating the card. Yeah. So it's, it, is, sure. it is a trickier variable to take into place. So now if we go back up, we can see that our temperature pretty much stayed the same, right? Um, so let's more or less just look at what we were focusing on as the GPU boost value. And we can see the GPU, val GPU boost value went up, but not by much, only 1090. But it is still a little bit over the actual GPU boost defined value, a defined value of 1078. So from here, let's go ahead and see what it looks like under our non-reference GTX 680 DirectCU2. Let's do it. All right, Doc, so uh, we've now gone ahead and uh, as we noted before, we've installed our GTX 680 DirectCU2 graphics card. it out. And uh, we've been running Unigen with the same settings as our reference card for about five minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and at this point, go ahead and exit out and take a look at some of the metrics just like we looked at on the reference card. Let's go. Okay, so here we have uh, GPU tweak. And uh, we can see right off the bat in terms of the temperature, uh, we're definitely running at a lower temperature, right? So 70C versus the previous, uh, about uh, 79 to 80C that we're seeing on the reference card, uh, as well as, of course, it's considerably quieter. When we go ahead and we scroll down here in terms of the fan duty, we can see that the fan duty is only 39%, and then also the fan RPM is about 1890. Now, uh, it's important to keep in mind that we're, of course, running at 2560 by 1440, so it's actually a bit more stressful than if we were running at 1080p. 1080p, we'd actually probably see the uh, the actual temperature data be somewhere between about 5 to 7C cooler, actually, as well as a, even a lower uh, fan duty cycle, as well as even a lower uh, fan RPM value. And yeah, most people run their monitors at 1920 by 1080 anyway, so... Yeah, correct. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Now, here's where the interesting thing comes into play. So if we take a look at the actual GPU clock value, right, we can see that our effective boost was actually 1123, even though we've gone ahead and set an apple-to-apple -apple comparison. Now, this is the top skew. We do have a non-top skew that essentially sips at the same frequencies as the reference card. But you can see here that even though the boost is set to 1058, what is our GPU boost value? It's actually in-game running at 1123. So we are offering a, quite a bit of an, an, ex, uh, an improvement over the actual default reference card. And if we take a look at the power target value, can we see that the power target value is at only 87% compared to the 105% that the reference card was at. So what this ultimately translates to is because we're running at a lower temperature marker as well as a lower TDP marker, we're gonna have more overclocking headroom. So with that, I think at this point, let's go ahead and see what some additional overclocking metrics look like as we scale the card up since we have additional headroom on both the temperature side of the fence as well as on the TDP side of the fence. Let's see how far we can push it. Okay.
Now, I will make the, the note that generally for users, uh, when you're pursuing overclocking on a 600 series card, whether it's a 690, a 680, or a 670, you want to make sure to go in moderate values. So generally, I recommend if you're utilizing your GPU tweak utility to just go in one step at a time. So that's going to approximately generally be 10 megahertz bumps. And at each one of those points, see what the new GPU boost value is, take a look at your power target, and then take a look at your temperature. And after you've gone through those consistent markers, you can go ahead and continue to extend the performance. But until you get to the point where either you've crashed at that higher frequency, don't modify voltage, and definitely don't modify the temperature or the power target values. Okay. Okay, Doc, so with that noted, let's go ahead and default the card back to the top values. All right. Okay, so that would be 1201, but from here we're still going to go ahead and overclock a little bit further. So in a lot of our internal analysis, we found that the majority of our DirectCU2 cards were able to go ahead and have a GPU boost clock setting of approximately about 225 to about 245, generally without any problems, and without actually making any modification to either the fan, to the voltage, or to the power target value. So basically just a slip and slide and away you go overclocked. Yep, we're pretty solid. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and set our actual GPU boost value to 1240. And from here, we're going to go ahead and run just like we ran before, uh, Aliens vs. Predator, and we'll go from there. Now, I always recommend try utilizing the actual game engines that you're actually working with when testing your overclock. The main reason being is that different game engines will induce different levels of load. Right, So if you test with something unrealistic, let's say like Furmark or OCCT, you're going to be pegging the power target value essentially to its maximum marker. And that GPU boost frequency that you have set is going to come down considerably, as opposed to where if you actually are playing a game, the power target profile is far more balanced. And so you're going to actually have a higher overall in-game overclock. So while it does quote unquote stress the card, it's not going to actually be representative of the values that you want when you're actually in the game. So that's why it's best to actually utilize the actual game engines that you're playing as your actual test uh, programs. So you pretty much recommend to the user to use the games that they play most often as their test bench. Yep, 100%. And, and it's going to give you the most accurate representation of how effectively the card is going to be cooled in terms of a temperature marker, what's going to be the accurate uh, target value in terms of the power profile, as well as what's going to be the actual realistic in-game GPU boost frequency. And one feature that we do offer in the GPU tweak utility is you can easily go ahead and go to the log function click that and it will log it essentially every second so that if you want to go back after maybe playing for 20 minutes and take a look and see what all that information is, you'll have it there in a nice log format. You can just see every instance what it was doing it. Correct. Excellent. So it's got a little bit more to run here, but once it's finished up, we're going to go ahead and go back and take a look and see what our new GPU boost value is now that we've gone ahead and overclocked the card. Okay, so we've gone ahead and finished up the run. So at this point, we can actually see if you look at the power target value, we're still underneath 100%. Compared onto the reference solution, if you remember at the base, 105 at the base operating parameter, and this really comes into play because we've got a far more efficient VRM design. So that's thanks to actually our Digi Plus VRM as well as our SFP power componentry, and of course the DirectCU2 heatsink and fan assembly. So through a combination of all of those, we're not only giving you lower temperatures, but we're able to improve the power target performance, which ultimately helps to benefit you to give you actually faster in-game performance. Not only that, JG, doesn't that also extend the life of your card, being that the better your power balances and without the card heating up and cooling down that actually extends the life of your card for quite a bit as well true a hundred percent and even the power componentry that we've picked on the card is actually far rated higher than the, actually the default components that are put onto reference uh, reference series product now not just your standard vanilla mix yeah definitely there we're not utilizing the standard components that you would have on a reference card now when we take a look at the gpu clock value you can see that we've got actually got some really impressive overclocking results we're now at 1.3 gigahertz essentially, where even with our GPU boost clock, we set it to 1240, you can see that it's continued to offer to have a boosted value. So at this point, you could, of course, go ahead and even continue to extend it further if you wanted to, maybe go another step, uh, maybe another two steps, and at that point, you could decide, okay, maybe do I need to maybe make one bump to the power target value or not make a, bu a bump. It just depends in terms of where you are in terms of that temperature as well as where you are on that power target value. And like I said, only adjust the voltage as the last uh, as the last resort uh, when you're seeing actually instability, um, but even though you have a low temperature and you have a low power target. So is there anything that you can tell for the people out there who are possibly thinking about going out and buying this new card? Like, is there some kind of threshold that you'd suggest they stay within? Like, you know, you don't want people to go too crazy and burn the card out. Has the people over at Asus, have they seen like, you know, a standardized, like really good overclock, like it's 1260, 1280? Is there somewhere that you guys have seen that's like really good and overclock, but still you guys know is very, very safe for the 
user. As I noted earlier in, in a lot of our testing, generally up to about 1240 is pretty consistent on most of our cards. Now our top series cards do have binning, uh, which means that we actually do sort them to have extended overclocking headroom. So those cards might get a little bit additional more headroom, so maybe instead of being limited to maybe closer to 1240, with maybe some modification to voltage and other tables like that, you might get somewhere between maybe 1235 to as much as 1270. Uh, it just depends on, of course, the variance that's going to have within the card. Okay. But I would say that for the majority of users that are looking at our 680 uh, series products, they're going to be somewhere within that effective range. Our 670 series products we're seeing consistently over 1.3 gigahertz as well. And uh, for the 690 part, of course, we're one of the only uh, two partners to produce one in North America. Um, still offers competitive overclocking, but you do have to be very conscientious of the, once again, power target and the temperature. Okay. So I think that overall gives some pretty cool information regarding how to overclock on the 600 series of cards. So hey, you guys seen it here. The lots of different things are going on when you get a direct CU top card from the people over at ASUS. All the superior cooling and the superior parts that go into the car, you guys can see from our results here that it really does increase your overclocking chances by quite a bit and also keeps your card running very, very, very cool. You guys saw it here. Welcome JJ back to our channel and we'll see you folks here for more videos next week.